So the key to having a clean and safe pool is to have clean water. And the key to that is having the filter clean. In my case, I have a cartridge filter. Um, I inherited it when I bought this home. And it took me about 12 years to kind of finally figure out what it takes to really clean the filter so they work well. I was getting tired of buying new ones. They're really large and they cost me about $400 every time I change the filters. So I had to find a good way to clean them. And I think I finally came up with one um, based on a lot of work on the internet and some other YouTube videos. So I thought I'd share that with you. So it's a three-step process, so bear with me and uh, here we go. So here's my filter to start with. Obviously a mess, has a lot of stuff in it. And as you can imagine, it was not doing a very good job of filtering the pool water. I've tried a couple other things here. I ordered online um, this custom filter cleaner, which worked okay, but really took a lot of effort and just frankly didn't get them as near as clean as I'd hoped, which means I needed to clean them more often and replace them more often. It also came with this handy little brush, which once again, sort of worked, but not really. So the key for me was to order this $13 washing car washing wand off of Amazon. I'll kind of show you how that works right now, but it really was what made the difference for me. And I think the filters come out a lot better and, and you'll see that in the video. Okay, so I've got the wand connected to the hose here. That's a nice convenient little shut off valve. So just turn on the water quite the jet coming out and then I start at the top always start at the top and then work your way down make sure you get the water in between the plates that's really the key and why this works so well because that's where a lot of the debris gets captured so I start at the top I work my way down in about two inch segments I rotate it and I do it again it uh, takes a long time I take maybe 20 to 30 minutes but if you want it done right it's gonna have to take, it, take that much time to really get it done correctly so that's how you do it. The other thing, uh, another tip that kind of came up with doing this is to kind of use this to get underneath these bands from the below, below and get some more debris out. See how more debris comes out there? So if you go upwards there to get the debris out and then go from the top down, everything rinses out pretty well and we'll rinse out the bottom of the So I won't keep this video going for 20 to 30 more minutes, but I'll show you kind of where we are with the next steps in the process are. So here I am after finishing the one stripe, basically about three inches from the top down. Um, you can definitely see the difference between where I've worked it and where I've sprayed it versus where I haven't. Uh, down at the bottom, you can look at all the debris that's already come out of this thing. So um, obviously it's doing its job and getting everything out of there. And I think the key really is, once again, to get all that debris out of the pleats. I probably should mention also that I'm using, as I mentioned before, just this, this um, wand that attaches to the, the garden hose. I don't want to use any more than house pressure. Um, don't I would never recommend using a power washer because I think that would really potentially do some damage to the pleats and the filter media. And then you're worse off and having to pay a lot of money for brand new filters. Anyway, I'm gonna keep doing this uh, all the way around and I'll show you what, what it looks like when it's done. All right, almost done here. I guess I just wanted to emphasize the one point about, you know, even though most of the time I go start from the top and work your way down, kind of angling down, so I don't have to be there. Um, when you get kind of when I get down with a stripe, I then kind of go underneath like this. And then you can see the little ridges there, right in the strip I've just done. And you'll see how it pops out a lot more material. I think it just gets stuck there behind those bands. So I do that after I kind of do one big stripe down, one more final time with this, and then come back to the top and rinse all that off. And I think that just does a, once again, a much better job of getting as much of the debris out of there as possible, which is clearly the primary objective here. All right, there it is. There's the kind of finished product after the washing out stage. You can kind of look at the ground and see all of the debris that came out of here. So it obviously made a big difference. And um, I guess, you know, theoretically, you could go ahead and just use these filters right now, put them back in, because obviously a lot of debris came out and I'm sure they'll do some good job of filtering. I do, however, do two more kind of lengthy process steps on this to really try to get it clean based on some things I picked up on the internet. Uh, so I'll show you that next, but like I said, if you want to, you probably could go ahead and put them back in now if you're desperate. But from what my experience, I'd recommend the next two steps as well, which um, really, really cleans these out and especially gets out things like the calcium buildup that's in there that you really can't get off just by spraying. So next I'll show you where to go from here. Okay, so the next step, and just FYI, for each one of these, it takes me about 30 minutes to do the process you saw before to get them to this level of clean. So they're definitely far from new. But looking much better for sure and you saw how much material came out of them so next step is soaking them uh, the first time first step i will soak them 
and mostly water and then I'll add a gallon of acid to that water and that like I said will hopefully break up most of the calcium buildup that's still left on there and some of the other material so that's the next in intent I bought this little trash can you see in the back here um, I was too cheap to buy one that was actually as tall as my filters but so what I do is I flip them over halfway but I got that just at a home improvement store and it works pretty well and like I said I was just too cheap to buy a bigger one Okay, so I'll show you how that process works. Okay, the four filters are in there, um, in the container, in the garbage can, and they're filling up right now with water, the whole container. So once it gets about half full, I'll add the acid, and then um, we'll show you where we go from there. Okay, we're about half full of water right now, so now I'm gonna add the pool acid, the muriatic acid. I would not recommend or suggest any other kind of acid than pool acid, because obviously pools and pool filters are used to this kind of acid, and it's not a very strong acid. So. I'm going to add this. Obviously, I'm wearing gloves for safety. And the reason I wait till the water is about halfway up is I want to make sure I can get it right into the water and dilute the acid as much as I can. I do not want to pour it straight onto the filter um, elements if I can avoid it. So this gives me a surface area to be able to pour it in there without causing any extraneous damage to the rest of the uh, mechanism. So once again, you always add acid to water not the other way around um, anyone that owns a pool knows this so shouldn't have to repeat it but nevertheless safety first so once again gloves add the acid slowly while the water is being added to the container and we'll get in there almost there okay and then i'll let it fill up the rest of the way and I will let these soak. Now when I actually have them soak, I'll let them soak for at least eight hours, maybe overnight, um, and then we'll go to the next step. So I'll show you when it's full and when I close the lid, but uh, I think you get the idea from here. Okay, it's full now. Um, now it comes the easy part. Just gonna close the lid and let them soak for, like I said, about eight hours. Um, since, once again, since you can see that the lid doesn't close all the way because I was too cheap, I actually come out and flip them over halfway through, uh, once again, using gloves uh, to be safe because even though it is pretty diluted in this water mixture with a lot of gallons of water in there still want to be safe okay I'll show you what's next after this okay the cartridges are done soaking so we'll open it up here and you won't see a lot of sediment necessarily on the top um, but you'll be surprised how much there is once you get down to the bottom so what we'll do now is we're going to take them out and rinse them, and then we'll do the final step, which is soaking them in a different solution, which I'll explain in just a few moments. Okay, so now with the cartridges outside of the acid bath, we rinse them off again um, in between baths. So I'm going to go back to the wand and use that one more time. You don't have to be quite as much, spend quite as much time on it as you did before, because you're not trying to get all the debris out in the middle. But these things work really well again, and you can see right there, how quickly it changes the color and gets off all the more remaining material. So the acid definitely helps to loosen up more of the debris that is really stuck to those, those pleats in the filter. So I'm gonna keep doing that, same as before. It'll go a lot faster, but I'm gonna do it all the way around all four filters and then we'll take it to the next step. Okay, so that's how they look after being rinsed following the chlorine bath quite a bit better than they started, huh? It was amazing how much stuff came out. Actually, a lot of, I think, residual algae, and it was, it was really worth it to do the second step and to use the spray nozzle to really get in between the pleats again. It was shocking the amount of material that came out, of debris, out in debris, which once again, that's what you want. And then here's the old water. This is the old acid water. You can't see a lot there. There'll be a lot of sediment at the bottom that has collected there through the eight hour process. Uh, and that's really, once again, Amazing how much stuff continues to come out after the first step in the process. So I'm gonna dump all this out regretfully and refill it. And this time I'll use a different process to do the last step of the entire cleaning operation. Stand by for that. All right, I'm dumping out all the water from the acid bath. And as I mentioned, there's a lot of debris that settles in the bottom. So just to prove that, I was gonna show you the bottom here. So this is it while we're dumping it out. And you can see all of that material that did come out. So it really does make a big difference. All right, well, to finish the final step, I basically just do another bath, and this time I use this TSP material. Um, works really well for cleaning. 
And as you can see here, it's about a four and a half pound box. I use about half of it each time I do a soak in this container. So I'll pour about half of it in here. I don't worry quite as much about getting the water halfway up or more. I'm not, not as concerned about the just the detergent getting up against the filter medium. So just add it at any time and then do the same thing. Let it soak for about eight hours. In my case, I'll be flipping them over halfway. And then we do a final rinse and, and that'll be it. So this is step three. Okay, once again, they are done in the bath after about eight hours. So we'll do the same thing, take them out, rinse them off, and then we should be done. Uh, once again, you can see not much not much debris floating on the top, but again, there will be quite a bit in the bottom, but not as much as the last two steps, of course. So we'll rinse them off and then we'll be done. Okay, for the final rinsing after the TSP bath, I'm gonna go ahead and use the wand again. As you can see, the filter looks pretty good, way better than it started. However, there's still some discoloration on there, which means there's still debris in the filter material. So we'll use this again and you'll see quickly how much of a difference it immediately makes in that final rinse, that final in the final phase here. So, as before, we're gonna do this all the way around, all four, all of my filters, and then I'll show you what the final product looks like. Okay, here it is, the finished product. After those multiple steps and quite a few hours, looks quite a bit different than it did to start, huh? So, there you go. Um, I guess one thing I should mention is I am always concerned about the amount of water this whole, this whole process uses. So, I didn't show in the video, but what I typically try to do is rinse them near a plant and pour the water out near plants where possible. Obviously, I don't do that with the acid bath because um, acid is not good for plants. But as much as I can, I try to do that because I just haven't found a way to do this in a better way than using all that water. I did try compressed air, that didn't work, and this is really the only method I found that really, really gets these things clean. So, there you go, there's my three steps. It worked for me, it only took me 12 years to figure it out. And I really hope that those of you viewing the video can get some benefit from it, and it won't take you a decade to figure it out like it did for me. So thanks, and good luck.